today I'm going to talk on picking a page builder, which uh, it's uh, an interesting task. It's a very large market of them. There are quite a lot of them out there, so I'm not going to be able to cover every option out there, but hopefully I'll give you some ideas of how to go about it and what to look for that's good, what to look for that's bad, what will cause developers to cry, what will cause them to be happy with you. Um, so who am I? Uh, I'm a lead developer for a company called Burlington Bytes. We're out of Burlington, Vermont. So we have about 400 clients now, about 300 uh, websites that I've created. You can find me at GShopee, and I hate page builders with passion. And a lot of developers are very similar to me. They make our lives very difficult. Um, page builders, they don't really work in a very WordPress way. And so, because they're a very custom system, a very large system built on top of WordPress, they often can yield their own troubles, people want custom blocks, etc. So, uh, I hate them so much that I actually, a few years ago, started building my own page builder. So, you can find that on the WordPress uh, marketplace. I'm not going to plug it, but they exist, they're hard to deal with, and so I'm going to give you the good and the bad of them, and sort of let you guys make your decisions. Um, pros, they save you a lot of time. Your budgets can be smaller, you can push out websites faster using a page builder, especially grocery sites. They add a lot of features, uh, things like sliders, things like carousels, um, accordions for expanding facts. Oh, a little further, a little closer, all right. Um, they, can, uh, they can let you do things that are not easy to do without them. And a lot of flexibility to the client. Some clients want to be able to control their own pages, make new pages, make new layouts. Some clients want a different layout for every page they make. Page builders can let you do that. Um, they can also simplify editing by giving an interface to a client to edit complicated page layouts that they might otherwise have trouble with. Downsides? Vendor locking. Page builders are run by small companies. If that small company disappears, that website probably needs a redesign because the page builder is going to be handling a lot of your content. Small dev teams, which I just mentioned, but they also can affect things like updates, response times to support. They can just be silent when you need them, and it can be a problem. Um, plugin compatibilities, not every plugin is going to work with every page builder. And you'll eventually build a stable of ones that work well with the page builders you're working with. But you can't just expect everything that's in the WordPress market to work with every page builder because they're complicated chunks of code that layer a lot on top of WordPress. So the uh, updating compatibilities when WordPress changes, the page builder doesn't necessarily. The multi-tool effect. Page builders do everything. They add sliders, they add carousels, they add forms, they add um, expanders, they had contractors, they had all kinds of things beyond just content. But all of those things are done sort of in a scattershot wide range effect. They'll give you a slider, but if you need layers in your slider, you probably need another plugin like Layer Slider, which will now be in there in addition to the Page Builder slider. Um, it's, you know, it's a multi-tool. It gives you a knife when you need a knife, but you probably want to have an actual knife as well. You're not going to use it for all your kitchen prep. Um, Comic Sans Effect. You give your client too much control, and you can end up with a softball flyer that is really, really bad. Um, <laughs> so some of them offer controls to lock down who can edit, who can make blocks, who can do what in there. That's a great feature for teams that want to be involved. Most of them give you the option of locking out the client and saying these pages are safe, you contact the devs, and that's a good option, um, but can make editing slow. Hard to customize. If you need something that's not in the page builder, building it into the page builder takes time, and not every dev knows how to work with every page builder. And lack of structure. If you need to search for content on a page, page builders don't break things out into custom fields. So if you have a thousand pages with a make of a car and a custom layout in a page builder, that structured data is not available to the rest of WordPress. So those are the cons. But you may or may not still need one. Um, if you're doing a small site, they can be awesome. If you're doing a large site, you might consider hard-coded templates for different brochure-style designs, or 
Uh, ACF Flexible Content is super popular, source everything in custom fields, and then you build small template parts that build it out on the front end. Widget areas, always a go-to. You know, your homepage has a slider widget area and like three feature widgets. It's a little confusing to edit, but they give you some structure and room in your page builder. Gutenberg is the new editor we heard about in the keynote. That's coming in a year and ish, and it's going to really change the game. Um, it's going to add a lot of these features into the editor so that you may not even need a page builder for some sites. So that's going to be a big thing. And the last thing is some sites, although we hate to say it, uh, if it's a very small budget and a very small brochure site, sometimes it's just not a great fit for WordPress. And it is worth it to keep in mind that if the client's looking for a short-term brochure site that will be replaced when they have a larger budget, it can be okay to point them somewhere else as an agency. But for the vast majority of cases, you're looking at some option, either with or without a page builder. So, qualifying questions to figure out what you need in a page builder and what you want in a page builder. Is it a brochure site? Is it, you know, very custom pages, very many layouts, very spread out? If it is, yes. Can I ask you, you keep saying brochure site. Yeah. Can you just clarify? So a brochure site would be something that is specifically informational about a product, very brief overviews, not a huge amount of depth of data, often a single layer of navigation, and is really designed for um, very, very front-end view. It's, it's not how do I get deep data, it's how do I get a quick overview. Um, 20 pages, templates, the bigger a site, the harder it is to work with the page builder. Is it being used uh, to digest it by other tools? So are you doing product pages where you need to search by size or color or skew or things like that? <clears throat> um, is the site designed to last? The longer a site needs to last, the more updates are going to potentially damage a page builder laid out design. Does it have custom post types? Does it have custom categories, fields, taxonomies, etc.? Is it very custom in data? If it is, page builders can be done. Um, and all these things don't just say, don't use one, do use one, but they can decide which page builder you want to choose. Um, so, Gutenberg, I should mention, everything I say today is probably going to change in a year. So, <laughs> Gutenberg is not a full page editor. It is designed to build more enhanced blog posts, more design options, but so many things are going to be changing with it. So many custom blocks in Gutenberg are going to be built, you may see some options disappear, you may see some options change. So when you're making a choice, keep in mind, Gutenberg changes everything. So I went through a bunch of the page builder options out there. And we're going to take a quick look at about eight of them. I'm going to go through a few screenshots, a few options, and we're going to see like what they do for pros, what they do for cons. I'm going to give you a quick rating of each one based on what I've seen. It's just an overall rating. Yours may vary entirely, so don't take what I put as a pro or a con, uh, necessarily, but the stuff that I've broken down into the different categories should help inform decisions. Are they in order of the best? The they are not. Oh, okay. That's a very good thing to know. No, they are not in any specific order. They are just in the order that I ran them. Actually, it's odd. They start out with ones that use short codes to design their stuff, and they end up, but that's entirely random. Um, short codes. The WordPress core hates them. Page builders are often very based on them. Um, and it's one of those things where there's kind of a fight to get more functionality of short codes from page builders and less functionality out of short codes by core. So you'll have some competing things. Um, I went through a bunch of categories. And right off the bat, going through all of the page builders I could, I had to scrub one category entirely, which is accessibility. And this is a big, important note. Front end, you may be absolutely fine for having anyone ADA compliant using your site if you're building with a page builder. On the back end, I have yet to find a single page builder that will allow your site to meet single A or double A compliance for WCAG accessibility. That means people who are using blind interfaces, people who are for, uh, working with hearing impaired interfaces, people who are even colorblind in many cases, are going to have a lot of trouble working with these interfaces. So, if your known team 
is meeting a certain demographic, they will work pretty well. If you have accessible needs, unfortunately, there really isn't a good option right now. And a lot of pressure could be put on them. Yes? You're talking about working with these page builders? Or working the with, that they yes. I, I'm, I'm speaking specifically about working with the page okay. builders. So it, the product that comes out can be very accessible. But if people on the team who are editing in the page builder have accessibility needs, there is oh, okay. not a single one I found on the market yet that really meets those to any affordable degree. So that should be a potential red flag. It is also something that every single one of those companies should be working really hard on. So I'm going to burn through a bunch of these really fast because there's a lot of them to get to. But here's where we go. Ah, last thing, I mentioned licenses, and a lot of people don't really care what, whether a license is closed or open as long as it works. With WordPress, you really should note a closed source license, something from Theme Forest, or th something that really is against giving back to the WordPress community. It very often can mean they're adversarial towards WordPress. Um, for example, one of the ones that I'm going to mention very often pushes updates after WordPress does, rather than in advance preparing for WordPress changes, so the theme builder can break, uh, page builder can break um, when WordPress updates, and you can be left waiting on an old version of WordPress for them to upgrade. And this can happen with any of the closed source ones. It's a lot more common with that than the open source ones because they will have people using the beta versions of WordPress, complaining to them, making them make changes, and pushing the ideas for changes to them. So. For reliability, security, etc., I really recommend the open source options. So, to do the test, I took Accessible Web. This is a property my company built a couple years ago. It's AAA compliant um, for accessibility. So it's a site that's usable by pretty much everybody on the web. It has a relatively simple layout, but it has a lot of things. It has a blog grid built onto the home page. It has a um, full width image at the top. It's not a slider. but um, Buttons, there's a vertically aligned button there, there's a color change in the heading, things like that. They're just little things. And I tried to recreate it in a bunch of builders without any customization. So, you know, no custom JavaScript, no custom CSS, just what I could do through their interface. And I got pretty good results in general. I All of them did fairly well, but um, there are caveats that came with each one. I said all of them did fairly well, there was one that didn't. But, um, Visual Composer's first. It's the oldest page builder out there. This one has been around forever. A lot of people use it. If you buy themes off Theme Forest, you have seen it bundled with themes. That's most of the good I can say about it. Um, it has a huge number of features. You can build pretty much anything in this. It has an okay interface. It's not great. There's a back-end interface like this. There's a front-end interface like this. That it works all right, and it doesn't entirely make me want to claw my eyes out. Um, one of the big downsides is it's based in short codes. So you disable it, and you get, oh, sorry, one other thing. There's some real what the heck's in the interface. This is the grid builder. I, this has no descriptions. There's no explanation right off the bat of how to use this, and I know it's very powerful, but come on, guys. Um, you disable it, you get this. Big mass of unreadable shortcodes. Uh, if you had an error in this plugin, this is what your site would output. Not great. Um, but this is the truth of about half of the page builders on the list. I generally am against those. Uh, Visual Composer is also closed source, which I generally am against. It also has uh, a few other things where for example, they bundle with themes. Bundled page builders with themes are common and are a terrible idea. Because the page builder, when it was not built by the theme builder themselves, is a totally separate property being maintained by a totally separate dev team. When WordPress updates, the page builder has to update. Then they have to contact the theme, which has to update and possibly update any changes or additions they've made to the page builder before it finally gets to you. If this is a security update that this happens on, this can leave you on a vulnerable version of WordPress or with a broken site until that update happens. It's not great. So across the board, 
Price is actually pretty good for a single license, no agency pricing. Um, that, not great. Uh, if you make 50 sites, you pay uh, $680, uh, which is not great. Uh, huge feature set, relatively good interface. Best thing about this, absolutely detailed user controls. If you need to say, this user can edit this type of widget, but can't change the settings on it, they can change the text in a field, but they can't change images, they can't delete anything, but they can. you can set up a role, you can add those options, and that specific user group can do only what you say it can do. And there's only a couple of page builders in here that do that, and Visual Composer is one of them. So if that is your top priority, Visual Composer might actually be a usable choice. Otherwise, there are better options. Uh, my personal rating, two stars. I don't like it much, but Divi. Divi mostly comes bundled with the Divi theme, which is a full page theme builder, not just a um, not just a page builder. So it doesn't just deal with the content in your grid, it deals with everything. Divi has a huge number of options, and Divi Builder can now be purchased separately from um, the Divi core itself. Also has a open source license. So although it's available for sale, uh, it is something where the source code can be looked at, can be improved by other people. Um, it has one of the worst interfaces I've ever seen. <laughs> By default, blocks are labeled as image, text, text, button. If you're looking at a complex page, it is almost impossible to see what's actually in that page until you click into things. You can't get an overview for editing from that view. Um, plus, I, I think the exact words that went through my mind when I was thinking of were clown, puke, it, it's a lot of colors, kind of randomly thrown. Yeah. These are still not terrible things. Um, the front end editor has a few interesting glitches. These are some module settings that I really need to customize buttons that I just can't get to. Um, I know that has to do with my theme, but if you want to work on every theme, um, Generally, this is actually a lot better view than the backend editor. It's still lots of animations, lots of brightly colored, not in theme things. It's very distracting, to be honest. Um, and when you disable it, it's shortcode based. So even more so than with Visual Composer, you get a big block of unreadable text. In general, it actually does a little bit better. Um, it is passing license. It's Pretty good user controls as well. This is the other one that gives you fairly good control of what users can do what. Um, 89 bucks is a little steep for individuals, but they also have agency pricing. So if you're an agency, you get unlimited for about, I think it's 199. And that's actually really good. I mean, you build five clients for that and you're cheaper than Visual Composer. Um, good license, short code based. If you need to customize it, very complicated. Lots of code goes into customizing uh, Divi or customizing um, Visual Composer. Three stars. Not terrible. Avada. Most popular theme out there. They have a built-in page builder called Fusion, which they've recently split off. You can use it in Avada to do the whole kit and caboodle, or you can do it on its own for just Fusion. Tested it both ways just to see how it would go. Interface looks like this. Um, it's another one that's kind of mystery meat. You don't really know what goes in things. There's not styled text in the text blocks. You can see the images. That's a lot better than it was um, on the other one. Interface is actually not heinous. The colors are kind of WordPressy. It's kind of workable. You could actually put this on a client site and they wouldn't necessarily know. When you disable it, this is. I swear, this is not something that goes on forever, but there's a lot of short code issues. And this one has the worst of all of them. That's a lot of short codes that just lumps in there for everything. Um, yeah, it's fairly large feature set, full theme, but license is closed, no user controls, short codes, really hard to customize, really, it's better to use than, sorry, uh, customization, better to use than some of the others, but not great. 
One star. Was not feeling generous. Beaver Builder. This one gets a lot of press as being dev friendly. Um, front end only. There's only one interface, which I like. They chose one path and they optimized for it. Very icon driven, so if you need words to tell, tool tips are there, but it's going to take a little getting used to. <coughs> you disable it. You get text. That's kind of awesome. You can actually style this text and you can get a pretty good facsimile of your original site without the page builder. If you get an error, people can still read your page. Um, that's great. In general, I, the only thing I wouldn't give it is it, user controls are role-based that you can use Beaver Builder or you can't. Um, and that's okay, but I'd really like some breakdown as to what you can do and what you can't. Otherwise, um, you need a full width theme for some features so it's not compatible with every theme, but it's compatible with most themes. If you choose one that says it's compatible with Beaver Builder, you're going to be great. Great to modify, great customization. I have all of these slides, by the way, on the website up here, so if you want to go back through these scorecards when you're making your own decision, you can. Four stars. I actually like Beaver Builder. I'd use it again. And do they have that agency? They do. They have a great agency license. Yeah, um, they also have a free version you can try out um, that is light on features but works pretty well. So are, they page. are they short code? They are not. Okay. No, they, they use a custom structure in the back end, and they actually they work fairly well for that. Um, Slide Origin Page Builder is one of the oldest free ones. Um, it's around about the same age as Visual Composer. This one I actually stopped halfway through. I did not complete a rebuild, and it was just tearing my skin off trying to use this. It was bad. Um, this one was... Well, their front-end interface really does the best job of showing it. They actually rely on right-click interfaces to add any modules in the front-end. Um, it's the least intuitive thing I've ever used. You, on the back-end, can't tell what's in different blocks. You can't see what's there. There's no colors to separate things. There's no styles. It's just, just don't use it. Just, just don't. <laughs> um, the license is OK. It's free. Otherwise, yeah. One star. Elementor. Uh, this I added last minute because someone mentioned it to me. I have never used this one before and thought, cool, I'll give it a shot. <coughs> only front end, pretty clean interface. The only thing that was complicated was you all your content goes here, all your layout goes here. I'd get used to that, but it was pretty intuitive. And when you disable it, you get flat HTML. It actually still loads, still works okay. I read through their customization documents and they're great. You can customize this thing really easily as a dev. Um, honestly, I want to see more out of these guys. Um, they're totally free for most features. I need one pro feature to do the blog grid on the homepage. It was like 34 bucks for one, and they had agency pricing, which was great. Um, honestly, my one five-star pick out of this. But once again, different needs may need different ones. User controls were not in there. Live Composer, somebody else told me this was the best free page builder ever. So, you're going to check it out. Uh, this interface, someone thought this was great. <laughs> this is bad. I can't find anything. I, there's no search. There's no... There's this bar at the bottom, which for a free site, this little hide this button should not tell me that I need to buy a pro plug-in to use it, especially because all of their marketing is about how they're free and they will never charge you. Um, yeah, they were not great. And you disable them. You don't get short codes. That's great. They use something custom. You actually get nothing. Your <laughs> entire site goes away. If they never error out, everything on your site is gone. It's wonderful. Um, yeah, they, they, yeah. Um, free for most features. Um, and uh, they were actually really easy to customize. I've got to give them that. Like, adding a new block was cake. But, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot that, yeah, don't, don't know. Um, <laughs> other contenders, there's a lot of these. And so, I mean, when I broke it down by these categories, look at these categories when you are looking at any page builder. Because there's a million out there. I didn't even include my own. I didn't include Bold Grid, which is downstairs. There's way more of them out there than you could ever look through. Check your categories, see how they line up with other options. And the other thing is, bigger groups are going to last longer. Gutenberg is coming. 
Um, so, yeah. Third party themes with bundle of page builder. Just, if it's not their page builder, run away. Like, the, the updates are going to be slow. If it's custom, it's bad. It's just pain. Uh, short codes are not meant to be nested. They're not meant to be used for the entire structure of your site. Just, God, no. Um, accessibility. None of these. None of these meet even basic accessibility. So, if that is something, if your users are going to be in here, if there are going to be a lot of users in here, there's no accessible option for page builders. If someone finds one, let me know on Twitter, because I cannot find a single one that meets accessibility standards. And yeah, Gutenberg is changing everything. If you don't plan for Gutenberg, you are planning for failure, because in a year, it's all going to be different. That is basically everything I've got. Um, my email, Greg Berlitz Bytes. There is a more complete version of this thing that is going up. You'd be amazed. That moved fast. There was a lot of talking. There are about eight more slides for each slide that was in there, giving a full review of every single one of these. So if you want to go through them, you can. Looks like we've got a question over there. Run over with a mic. Um, I'm not sure what you meant when you said this is uh, turned on and this is turned off or disabled. Oh, so yeah, the last slide in each of the uh, demos that I showed is a preview with the plugin disabled. So if there was an error with the plugin or any plugin that uses that plugin that caused it to break, what would happen to your site? Basically, in the worst case scenario for your site, while you're trying to fix things, what's it going to look like? Um, or if you have to stop building it because they discontinue it, what are you going to be looking at for? during your rebuild. Could you just go? Uh, I just yeah. want to know, while we're chatting, if you could go back to the first slide where you showed what the variables were Certainly. you used, I so that we can just reference it and cut and you right continue. back. I'm going to disrupt you. Sorry, this will take just one second. Thanks. I s Damn, it was the beginning. Thing. Almost there. Yeah, a lot of stuff you covered. I swear, <laughs> Thank it'll you. happen. Thank you. Uh, that, yes. Thank you. No problem. Uh, it looks like we had, oh, you, we can get that one. We got one back there as well. Can we do this one first? Yep, absolutely. Would you give us a little more information about the battle between short codes and not using short codes? Yep. Not for an entire site, yeah. mm -hmm. but for very specific things. So actually, you've touched right on the core of what that battle is, is short codes are designed for very specific use. They're designed to enhance your site with dynamic content or content that can't be easily added in the editor itself. And when they were designed, no one expected them to be used as nested columns and buttons and blocks and such. And, and when you build your entire site around wrapping everything in multiple short codes, it becomes really slow and really unstable. Um, and of course, if it breaks, the short codes all become visible. Um, there's no plugins that even store passwords in short codes, and that's a really bad idea if they break, because then your password's just out there. Um, in general, Google is designed to be an address or a response to short codes in some ways, trying to create a more usable uh, option for people to do more visual work instead of using more short codes. Um, not to replace them entirely, but to kind of bring them back to where they were meant to be. Very lightweight, dynamic content. So that comes probably with WordPress 5. So for example, I use a short code. I design um, continuing education programs for nurses. So the certificate that gets printed is a short code on a page. That's a very specific use and very like locked down in, sorry, locked down in scope. And that would actually be a use I'd support using a short code in. Um, and that is likely to be fine. In that's Gutenberg. likely to be fine in Gutenberg. Shortcodes are not getting removed by Gutenberg, but the scope may be changed. Yep. Um, we had one back there. Yep. So my issue actually um, comes from working with a client. So we have a client who we built a custom website for. It's a custom theme, and it's built in WordPress. The client would like to control a part of the front page. So this isn't specifically talking about using a builder to build the entire site. It's only talking about using the builder to build, let's say, everything between the header that's going to be static across all pages and the footer that's going to be static across all pages, but just the front page to give them 
um, a little more customization in how it looks. So it's not just like block content there, your sidebar header. Um, there's a few options that can help you address that. Um, oftentimes, if they need that kind of layout, I build them. Uh, if you're looking to go custom, I build them a few custom widgets, and I build widget one areas. Room. It's just it, it gives them much better control of what they're actually touching. Um, if you want to give them a full page builder, I mean, that's certainly possible to do and to say um, you probably would have to code your own limitations to make sure it was only used on that page if you wanted to lock it out of being on other pages, otherwise it might get abused. The way it works out is, um, so we actually, it, it can be used across all pages, but we've used Divi Builder, the plugin, mm -hmm. and we've connected Divi Builder to certain parts of the front page template to, to go and spit that information to there. Mm -hmm. and I. Would there be a better builder that you would recommend for that, or are they all going to be pretty similar in how they handle? It's probably something. I mean, it's probably specific enough that we could talk about the scope after. Mm -hmm. um, I have some thoughts okay. on on that sort of very limited scope, but it's uh, it's it's sort of a yeah, it's a toughie. There's not a great <laughs> answer for you on that. Thank you. Can you just say what you mean by lock in? Lock in. So um, the ability to leave a vendor. So if you're using a um, oh. a page builder, the ability to move your content from that page builder to another, um, or if it breaks. Yep, got one back there with Mike. Can you just um, say a few words about using page builders to uh, build templates for custom post types? Yeah, um, there's uh, actually every single page builder I was working with, at least in their pro version, had the ability to build and save templates that you could then load again, and they all had the capability to be registered in custom post types. They didn't all have the ability to set a default template in the page builder or to lock it down. Um, and that's sort of where that data structuring can fall apart um, in that you can set that custom post type template to anything, or you can set it to the wrong template. Um, it works, and it's capable, but it's it's not a great solution in general for custom post types. I, I really recommend either a custom template or a, or a theme-based solution where it's locked down to that template, um, unless you really need flexibility across all sites or all pages. Got one back there. I feel like I'm running over right now. There's a yep. plugin called Content Views, which, if you buy the pro version, has like four tabs of information that you can customize, um, so you can do pages, posts, images, all kinds of things, and you can tell it, you know, three columns on desktop, two columns on a tablet, one column on mobile, you can change colors, you can change fonts, and all kinds of stuff, and you put it on a page with a short code. Is that going to break with Gutenberg? Um, it probably will still work as a single short code being dropped into a page. I mean, most of the things that might have trouble with Gutenberg would be advanced nested short codes. They're rewriting the script that parses short codes, and edge cases that get ex uh, exploited by some page builders that are based in short codes, where they inject page, short code after short code after short code after short code, those are not necessarily going to be trustworthy because they're exploiting edge case uses. So that would be like the column builders? That would be like a column builder that uses nothing but short codes. Those could have trouble. Now, there's no guarantee that they'll have trouble. Um, they could actually be addressed better by Gutenberg, but it's just there's no promise that Gutenberg is going to support the kind of edge case that was never officially supported by WordPress to begin with. So the if it drops in by a short code, you're probably fine. If it drops in by 50 short codes, that's a little more iffy. <laughs> And if you had one plugin for columns and you're using, say, Max Buttons, which uses other short codes, then you short switch. codes are a questionable thing. Okay. I know you didn't want to, but would you plug Blockade for I, us? I can plug it briefly for you. Basically, um, the biggest thing I hate about short codes is that they take you out of the WordPress editing experience. Uh, short codes, um, page builders. They have their own experience. They take you away from custom meta fields. They don't base themselves in what wonderful environment WordPress has already given us. So Blockade is basically a page builder built inside TinyMCE um, in the actual editor itself. So it gives you columns, it gives you buttons, it gives you, and it gives you visual displays for all of the blocks, um, drag and drop, etc. But the goal is just 
stay in what WordPress gave you and just enhance it. Um, whereas everybody else seems to want to replace, and I know why they do it, because seriously, this has been a nightmare building. Um, but uh, yeah, so the big, the big plus there is uh, that, and that everyone has your HTML. You can actually inspect anything in Blockade, and if you need something super custom for your needs, you can just edit attributes, you can change what column spacings you're using with that or with the interface, and it's based in Bootstrap, so it's super common. Uh, just not plug in it because, you know, it's not popular, and it probably will change with Gutenberg. I plan to keep it going, but it's going to oh, need to so. match content blocks, which are a very different answer. Yeah. For those of us in the back, could you read off your email address up there? or the Oh, the, the web address? Link? So, yeah, the, yeah this is going to be hiding at uh, gshoppy.com, G-S-C-H-O-P-P-E.com, slash WC Boss 2017, WordCamp Boss 2017. Um, so WC BOS 2017. Uh, and I'll have the more complete version there probably after lunch. Uh, we got time for one or two more. Okay, two more. I got you back there. Are most of these uh, page builder layouts, um, are they based on Flexbox? And if so, um, are there implications for Internet Explorer? So um, a lot of them are based on Flexbox. The question is, uh, are a lot of the page layouts based on Flexbox and other implications for Internet Explorer? Um, a lot of them are based on Flexbox, especially if they give you vertical controls. Not every one of these does give you vertical controls inside columns, but if they do, they're normally based on some variant of the Bootstrap 4 grid, not necessarily exactly Bootstrap 4's grid, um, and that means that your Internet Explorer compatibility is not going to be complete back to IE 10. It's going to be 11 and up. Um, it falls back fairly gracefully, and you know the IE 10 users are not going to get your vertical centering. They might not get uh, content flipping for which column goes first, things like that. But your standard uses are going to stick. And um, honestly, at this point, I think anyone using IE 10 or below, it's, it's, it's OK to give them a slightly degraded experience. <laughs> we got time for one more. Oh, that one's perfect. So I don't really know if this is a page builder question. So basically, I'm looking to build a site that has a, um, a portfolio for a photographer. And do I want to look at a page builder? Do they have includes things like widgets, or do I want to go looking for a plugin? Do I want to look for a widget? Or do I want to learn how to write my own widgets? Well, I mean, I'm a dev, so I almost always say, oh, yeah, you should write your own. Um, that normally is not a great excuse uh, or not a great answer for people because that's a very long and arduous process uh, for one thing. I will say it's a great reason to do it. But um, <laughs> in terms of generally getting a portfolio off the ground, um, you want a custom post type with custom templates. So, so a plugin like custom post type UI could help you with that if you wanted to go the more custom template build it yourself route. If you wanted to go the more drop in solution, there's portfolio plugins for pretty much all of these page builders out there where you'd install the page builder itself and then a portfolio plugin would add the custom post type, the grid controls for dropping in blocks. So either option. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Which does it? It's lunchtime. There probably will be more questions about page builders. It's an endless task. If any of you want to catch me at all, I'm going to be kicking around. I'll be eating lunch at some point. But uh, I'll uh, have a happiness bar at one point. But, uh, or you can always hit me up on Twitter, email. Um, or my website. Lunch downstairs, everyone. Uh, yes. So the biggest thing, I mean, I come from C and Java mostly, and the biggest thing that was starting off the page was I almost forgot. Uh, 